Broadcasting from the Broadcasting Studios in Melbourne. This is Will. This is Will. Brought to you by the Unshackled by the Unshackled Coffee. Now here's Tim Will. Now here's Tim Will. Now, as I mentioned on last week's show, uh, I visited New South Wales on the weekend, so I was free of all of D uh, Dan Andrews' uh, coronavirus uh, decrees. Uh, there are no cultural masks in New South Wales. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, my great escape uh, for the weekend, even though I'm back uh, broadcasting here in Melbourne, Victoria now. One of the many escapees I was there with was uh, Hillbilly from the uh, Proud of Your Hunter uh, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, which is a, uh, or you, you wouldn't say a Proud Boy affiliated channel, but a Proud Boy supported channel. The Proud of Your Hunter is a, a play on the uh, one of the Proud Boy slogans, uh, Proud of Your Boy. Uh, so I caught up with him earlier this evening to discuss uh, the, just how much COVID has changed the culture of Australia. And uh, we, we are still living with diminished freedoms and it's even changed the culture uh, between our states. Uh, so I'll just uh, play that all for you now. This is Will's Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Hillbilly, you. welcome to Will's Front. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we had uh, both you and I, that, along with uh, many others, uh, the great escape on the, the weekend because uh, of November... 29th to, to 30th uh, because the Victoria New South Wales border opened on the the 23rd and uh, now as as we're going to air we've got the the Northern Territory Tasmanian Queensland Australia. and even South Australia border open though Victoria has still got the hard border with uh, South Australia due to their outbreak which I think uh, is is basically a, a spiteful border given they locked us out for so long because we were supposedly in Victoria. There's, there's a lot of spite one. between the two states. There's a lot of spite between South Australia and Victoria. There's been a long feud since the F1, obviously. But um, it was it was surreal, wasn't it? Walking through uh, those towns and just not seeing anyone with masks and stuff in New South Wales and it was just sort of business as usual. It's crazy, you know? We were just uh, so freaking desensitized from all these freaking masks and rules and obligations and regulations coming from here to our zoo. It just, you know what I mean? It was just a good eye opener to have a bit of 2019 reality back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, because you'll remember that, because uh, uh, Dan did another easing of restrictions before the New South Wales border opened where you can now uh, legally ditch, ditch your mask outside uh, if you can maintain social distancing, but you still have to wear them in the, the supermarket or even if you're going to go into the servo. To, it, it, so you can fill up your car with petrol without a mask on because that's outdoors, but if you go in to pay, then you have to put it on. So... I had the similar problem down at the pub. Um, pub in Warrigal, I won't mention the name obviously, but uh, went to this pub in Warrigal. They've, there's no one sitting in there. There's no bookings. It's completely empty. It's just full of staff from here. I go in no mask and I says, eyes opened up. Strength, you know, the spine snapped back up and said, where's your mask, mate? What's going on? You need to have a mask. You can't, you can't come in here without a mask. I say, look, I've got an exemption. I've got asthma. I was wearing a mask. I used to work in a hospital and I was continuously getting these freaking bacterial infections. I understand, you know, the, the, the applications of the mask, but I don't believe I need one to order a beer. And he said, well, no, it's house rules. You need a, a mask just to order a, a beer from so the house rules. From the, not these are house, house rules. rules okay? oh. No, house rules. House rules. And obviously it's private property, so I'm not going to fucking cause a ruckus. I'm not a Fed. So I went there and, um, yeah, house rules, just to freaking order a drink from the bar and take it back to your table in that two-second freaking interaction. What's the freaking point? You know what I mean? I know the reason why they freaking made it mandatory is because they bought too fucking many. They, <laughs> they went nuts. There was warehouses chock for full of them, you know? So they got to get rid of them somehow. Otherwise, they'd go all expired and then, 
Yeah. And the other thing is, is where is all these masks coming from? They're not coming from the, the factories in Shepparton that freaking jumped up and down at the start of the pandemic, all the textile factories saying, we'll make them, we'll fucking go nuts, we'll, we'll, make, we'll go to the factories 24-7, we just need government support. You know what I mean? None of that happened. But Victoria decided to buy all their masks exclusively from fucking China, and they're crap masks. You know what I mean? The unions, the health worker unions, and all the other places are fucking jumping up and down because they're not up to standard. You know, there's no indication about what standard they are, or, you know, they just make up all these fucking terms. Like they call it a P2 plus four mask or some shit. You know what I mean? Like they just. The corruption is fucking insane in Victoria, you know? With foreign entities, it's just disgusting. Uh, 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 Dan here finally condemned the, uh, oh, we shouldn't say doctored photo, but fake fictional photo that a uh, uh, Chinese uh, foreign ministry published of a uh, Australian soldier slitting the throat of an Afghan boy. Uh, yeah. But he still said yeah. that oh, we still need to heal the relationship because it's, it's good for our uh, economy. But that's pretty much the strongest that I've ever heard, Dan, being... Uh, against China. He's just doing it because he's got to try and muster some of his communist countrymen that he thinks, you know, the, the, the patriotic communists, you know, those patriotic socialists, the Nazis. <laughs> that oh, well, he's fucking got in his back pocket. Stalin was a, a, you could say, national socialist as well, or more like national communist, because he, Lenin wanted glo globalist communism, but Stalin changed it to socialism in one country, which is why uh, initially Stalin and Hitler signed the, uh, the non-aggression pact uh, yep. in 1939, which, yeah, we all know how that... They, 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 well, I mean, the ideologies were pretty much the same. They were both trying to do something for their country, but in the communist, selfish, dictatorial way, which never fucking worked. But now you said before, um, what was the first bit of the second that question you just said with uh, how? Oh yeah, the 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 Afghani boy with the throat getting slit, right? So that Sky News guy Rowan, he freaking um, he unpacked it a little bit. He said, um, "It's in Sun Tzu's art of war to attack." enemies the the, the the top level uh military of your enemy you attack them with fucking morale attacks and fucking you know psych psychological psychological attacks you know what i mean you try to demoralize the the leadership as much as possible and how convenient was all this sas stuff it just manifested now uh, after you know X amount of years of this of this supposedly fucking being happy. At the end of the day, they're fucking soldiers. We we didn't ask them to go. We told them to go there, and they were fighting oh, a fucking the, the war of stand and at the death. time. How government? The how government, government in two thousand one uh, told them to go there. Every Tim at that time, everyone was still off the tail end of fucking um, TV amnesia. You know what I mean? Mainstream media amnesia. So everyone was just going with the flow. Oh shit, we got attacked. Fuck, just kill him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking uh, preemptive strike. Go nuts. And that's, that's just, you know, Bush got in and Howard and they just, they mustered up all this fucking uh, angst and all this stuff. But, you know, they fucking, it's just so blatantly corrupt what the fuck's going on. You know, if people look through the, what their true intentions are and what fucking goes on, we shouldn't be sending our soldiers to fucking, who gives a fuck? About to fucking, like it has good elements of history and this, that and the other, but their culture is fucked. You know what I mean? They have a really fucked up culture. Uh, can't, I, can't, I can't say I've I've travelled that extensively. Well, uh, I can't at the at the moment because we're we're all still banned uh, from uh, fr from exiting Australia. That we can. So April apparently this this. Has it stopped them selling tickets? They're all back open in April. So. Well, don't don't count on it because one thing that uh, governments throughout this pandemic uh, uh, in Australia, they they certainly haven't given people certainty. Uh, Mark McGowan, uh, he said, even though he's re he said that they're reopening the controlled 
border, as he calls it now, with uh, Victoria and New South Wales, if there's an outbreak, we'll reinstitute the hard border. So, well, a fat lot of certainty that gives uh, people. And he said to Western yeah. Australians, oh, if you get caught away from uh, Western Australia when there's an outbreak, oh, you'll have a hard time getting getting back, which is, of course, that's, yeah, he, he sounds like a, a dick when he says that. Glomaniac, fucking dictatorial piece of shit. Mm. But um, yeah, with the air travel, it's going to be crazy. I was talking to some of the boys today, and I'm just like, I had all this angst. To I'm a bit of a jipper. Like I like, I don't like to stay in one fucking spot for too long, right? So I've always travelled fucking ages, and I had this long spell where I didn't travel for a very long time. And fucking now, I miss it more than ever because they're telling me that I can't do it. Well, that's why I want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey? And then I'm yeah, scared. I've got the travel bug more than more than ever now because I'm told that uh, I can't do it, which is why going to New South Wales was uh, was so great on the weekend. And to bring it back to where we originally started, with the it was interesting. Yes. Wodonga, uh, even though it was forty degrees that day, as yeah. people were going into the supermarket, still got the masks on. But Albury, uh, uh, none. Of that, and remember, guns out, guns out. Yeah, it's just and remember, Dan. Uh, he he said he wanted to check with the chief health officer if uh, the rules uh, would follow us when we went uh, interstate, which of course he has no jurisdiction over uh, outside of Victoria. And it reminded me of this meme. I'm not sure if you've seen it, where it's like, "Why won't Victorians wear their cultural mask? Because we're pissed off to New South Wales, dickhead." <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I've seen a lot of SA ones, but I haven't seen that one. Bloody, um... Well, South Australia there... I'm, I'm scared of... I'm, I'm scared of what the new normal is. Mm. You know what I mean? What is normal? What's normal to you and me, Tim, is very different. To my neighbour yeah. is very different over here, you know? It's just, like, what's this fucking new normal shit? And you know what I, I was saying to uh, Rhino the other day was, um... Oh, sorry, just, just this morning was um, the small businesses they think they're going to get rid of with all these fucking regulations and masks and this and that lineup appointments. Everything's fucking hard to do now. But they're going to create a, a black market. Like a, all these small businesses, if you go, like, to, like just a regular small mum and pop sort of Joe and Joanne sort of business, um, they're freaking, they don't give a shit. They, yeah. just, they, they quickly serve you, you they get everything. And th that's what's going to happen is like there's going to be a divide between you go to the big shop and get fucked around with lines, appointments, wear masks, rules, you know, kicks in the teeth. You can just go to the shop a bit smaller and just go and get what you want and have a nice pleasant conversation and everything's hunky-dory. Because at the end of the day, they've got to understand Australians are very relaxed, casual people. So our accent even reflects that. This is the most relaxed way to but pronounce and the most slowest way it's, to it's pronounce also, English. That uh, attitude has also, as we've seen this year, led mm. to a lot of uh, passiveness and uh, uh, this year, which has led to acceptance. Well, if the government tells me to wear this mask all the time, well, uh, that's, that's what I should do. I mean, there's hardly been uh, any a substantive uh, revolts against the, the, the lockdowns uh, that we've had in Australia, not like we saw in the, uh, think, the US no, and Europe. I think compared to France, well, France, I mean, they, they go nuts. You know, they yeah, yeah, they protest them. everything. Well, they when I say protest, um, they, uh, it's a riot uh, when they've just got this minor change. Yeah. They uh, forced reparations in their minds. <laughs> but yes, uh, we but, um, still ha still had the COVID normal in in New South Wales. You still yeah, you still have to what is it? They've got the mandatory QR codes now, which that's still a pain when you go. You can't just uh, go into a, a pub to sit down in New South Wales and and have a drink, or uh, dare I say, stand and have a drink in uh, New South Wales as well. You you got to check in and you have to be seated to have a, a drink or a meal. It's still it's still not normal. Like 
with that mindset that I had before, if, if you couldn't go drink in the pub, what's the average Aussie going to do? I'll just go to the bottle shop and drink in the park next to it. Roll, and you know what I mean? And then what's that going to do? Oh, I got too pissed because I was upset because of it. And, and then the cops are going to, you know what I mean? It's just going to be this perpetual bullshit where these people used to be able to pile into pubs, as is our culture. And what do you get from a pub? You get good mental health. You get freaking, you know, your mates are there. You get good experiences. You learn stuff. It's just a, a meeting place. So what they're, they're trying to do is make all these fucking this fuck into this fuck to change all the laws, isn't it? That's blatantly what they're doing. Keep people busy with all this crap, demoralize the crap out of them, and then ScoMo comes in with 2020, oh, I just have to change this law here, sir. I've got to have this power now. I want that. I'll have this. And I'll take a couple of those. Well, it's it, it seems to me that uh, they because it, it's as uh, my guest last week, uh, Tricky Trudy said to me, sort of the the lo the, the lockdowns, the uh, restrictions, surveillance, and especially the second lockdown that we all suffered through. It's like a psyop operation where people just uh, accept the the various uh, vaccines that are in. Uh, production as a as a way to go back to normal, mm. and that's what Stan Andrews has said. There's uh, there's no normal uh, without a vaccine. There's just COVID normal, and so we've always got to have some uh, restrictions. Mm. And, and that's what I do believe yourself and me and everyone else that's freaking jumping up and down is worried about. Is uh, these fucking bastards will just become oligarchs you know with no with no fucking uh, repercussions with no one to to watch them with no one to be witness you know it's just it's crazy i don't know why there's not enough people joking about it that's that, that's my dig at the moment is people just seem complacent they're so pushy they're just you know i don't get it yeah Exactly. Uh, this uh, poster was put out by the uh, Mel uh, the the Melbourne Freedom Rally uh, Telegram uh, group, oh, yeah. which which said no COVID yeah. normal because masks aren't normal, coercive vaccines aren't normal, dissident suppression isn't normal, medical surveillance isn't normal, social distancing isn't normal, Dan's dictatorship isn't normal. There's nothing normal about COVID normal. It's pretty good. It's very well written. What do you think about it? Yeah, because uh, uh, this is, as, as I've been saying to my own audience, co uh, COVID yeah. normal still has the uh, the uh, surveillance uh, we, with the, the QR codes and, and the social distancing as well, the, the, the dots uh, when you go into the, the supermarkets. They're still everywhere uh, that you go. You, you still can't shake hands. You have to do the, the elbow thing, do the... That's one uh, thing. The shaking, the non-shaking of the hands is disgusting. You know what I mean? You know what, what the whole... It, to shake hands is just to show that you're unarmed. You know what I mean? It's, it's such a simple, pleasant gesture that the West has freaking strived to have for so many fucking hundreds of years. And to say that you can't fucking shake hands is just fucking insane. Like, I understand their, like, technocratical science that they want to push on people, but they have to understand their facts can still be prejudged and overturned. You don't have the fucking absolute knowledge. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of science. You keep questioning. You keep trying to find what the fucking the truth is. Keep double-guessing and, and testing and continuously stress-testing everything, any every little fact that you've sort of made. But they've lost that. They, they find one little easy keyhole of fact and then they just latch onto it like a leech on your leg <laughs> you know what i mean it, uh... Uh, now dan's making another announcement uh, this sunday uh, about the, the the step towards it used to be uh covid normal uh, but if you have a look at the he keeps mm. changing the roadmap it's now called a a covid safe uh summer uh so He's, he's promised that uh, pub, public gathering uh, limits uh, will increase, so will visitors summer. to the home. Uh, it says face masks subject to, to public health uh, 
uh, advice. Uh, but as uh, was posted on Facebook by one of my previous guests, uh, uh, Nathan Kyle, that Dan promised us in his uh, COVID normal that there'd be no restrictions on public gatherings, home visitors, weddings, funerals, re uh, religious gatherings, office office workers and hospitality, but at the, as it stands at the moment, there's a cap of 50 on public gatherings, home visits, yeah. cap of 15, mask so recommended just, inside. The religion's disgusting. Um, you shouldn't fucking put any caps on anyone congregating for any faith thing. That's just yeah, it's 150 like in, inside right. with a mask, um, uh, 300 outside. Weddings. Weddings. Is just filthy. Like, yeah. What How are you the, supposed to have an weddings inside are cultural. wedding with first, a mask on? First, first of all, weddings are cultural, right? You know, you might get away with a small country Aussie wedding about 150, or maybe there's 10 of them. You never know, right? But that they're sort of random. But your Punjabi Pindwala fucking weddings, or your your Chinese Shanghai deluxe super fucking mega weddings. What about your Arabs? <laughs> you know what I mean? What about your traditional oh, well, Irish Catholics? Like, there's Indian to all, all cultures that you want a bigger wedding, most extravagant as possible. Yeah. Remember, that's what all the, the bridezillas always want, that perfect, epic wedding day. Yeah. Well, they announced to, announced today uh, in New South Wales that they're going to have another easing on uh, December the the seventh, which is when our step to COVID safe summer will happen. Uh, so they're going to have a two square meter rule uh, inside uh, hospitality venues and and places of of worship, uh, except for gyms and nightclubs, which will be one person per four square meter. Uh, maximum of fifty people bunkum, Tim. In, in gym classes, but they're they're going to be allow, allowing uh, fifty people on the dance floor at nightclubs now, stadiums and theatres. So basically, at uh, what is it, uh, Stadium Australia, one hundred percent see the capacity, and also at the SCG as well. Uh, indoors, seventy five percent. So that's at like theatres. Uh, public gatherings increased to hundred up from. 50, 5,000 for, uh, for outdoor events that are fenced, ticketed and, and seated, which basically means, have you seen uh, those outdoor events which are fenced? You basically, you're like cattle, you get your own, uh, you get your own pen Mate, at an outdoor event. Did you see that the ones in like, what is it fucking, I don't know if it was Sacramento or London, or it was something crazy and quite fucking cheap. You seen that one? And there's a meme like freaking, oh, look at the sheeple. And they're yeah. literally in these little pens and with fucking on bench seats, just mm. like slobbering down hot dogs and sculling soft drink and stuff. I was mm. just like, fucking hell. Mm. What? Isn't that just like the whole nicety of life is getting fucking destroyed? Mm. You know what I mean? Like enjoying the daily things of your, of your, of the chores of your day is it's getting all wiped out. So. You know, imagine if you, you can't even have a picnic anymore. You can't just take some old, you know, bit of cheese, a bit of bread. Oh, well, you can now. And go out and you can now, but imagine if they start fucking penning off. You know what I mean? Like, well, they I just have don't know the, when's the end of it. When, when are they going to yeah. securely say, like, it's a virus, we can't fight it. We just have to cope and protect the people that are the most vulnerable. Yeah. And that's it. At uh, St no Kilda Beach, that. they've had the, remember, the social distancing circles. So if you're going to have a picnic there, you have it within the social distancing circles. So they're, the groundskeepers, you know, at the community sport uh, where the, the groundskeeper puts the, uh, uh, puts the, 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 the white, white paint on the, the footy oval or the, the soccer oval, they now, yeah. they've got a new job now doing the social distancing circles at uh, parks and foreshores. COVID marshals. Oh, uh, yes, the, uh, what the, is that? Yeah, the... COVID uh, marshals. The, the fake marshal. police officers. The, the fucking big police. You know what I mean? Busy mm. bodies. Where's your mask? Where's your papers? 
What do you got? Have you seen? Have you been to China the past fucking fourteen days? No. You, got, you know what have you been doing the last fourteen, 14 days? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just going to get bloody. Yeah. So for non too non invasive. Ads, and that's not what democracy uh, is. It's not what for non ticketed uh, outdoor events, i.e., community sport and outdoor protests. Uh, there's a three thousand person limit, and it has the the two square meter rule. Well, so a freedom of a a political speech then how big and assembly. Is the venue of but how big is the ve where are these venues going to come from? They're just going to have them in parks, like three thousand people spread two meters apart. Like well, you couldn't you couldn't have that in Rod Laver, hmm. or like what's going to happen to Rod Laver? Just dock it down. Oh well, that's a, that's a yeah. that's a, a, a Rod Laver is a fenced uh, ticketed event, so it's different. They're they're talking about uh, community sport where it's not Music ticketed festivals. and ob and obviously. Uh, outdoor protests are not uh, ticketed. Yeah, why would the, so why would the... That's just targeted at bloody rural areas, that is. That's fucking shit. Because, I mean, that's just that's just sporting events that are out here that... I just, I do, people, wake up, all right? It's a virus. Yes, it may kill you, but there's a lot of other fucking things that are going to kill you. There's no point in being so fucking scared and giddy. I know. You're more likely to fucking... Like, get hit by your neighbour reversing out of his fucking yard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, people kill people. Huh. Yeah. All right? Not yeah. <laughs> I've always made the uh, the joke but when anyway. I've been close to having a, a nasty accident and uh, 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 said to others, well, imagine if I injured myself uh, uh, with this uh, <laughs> when we've got a pandemic on. <laughs> Because remember, people only seem to, well, our leaders especially, are fixated just on COVID-related uh, illnesses. They, they, haven't, they, they haven't given oh, the, much thought to a, others. The great excuse, Tim. The great excuse. That's, that's what it would be known as. The big, the big excuse, you know what I mean? Everyone's scapegoat is fucking COVID. Mm. Oh, mate, can I change my telephone connection? Nah, COVID. Can I pay mm. me bill? Nah, COVID. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just everything, everyone's using this as such a quick way to fucking get out of work, uh, cause more work. I think it's caused more work and given people employment and ways to fucking ponder their time than, you know, most things. It's fucking just made all this extra layer of fucking virus tape. We had red tape, the communist shit. Green tape from the fucking idiots, and now we've got virus tape. You know, purple tape. Call it well, purple did tape. you, uh, did purple you know tape. that even though we've been <laughs> uh, COVID COVID free in Victoria for over a month month now, uh, as of today, it's thirty three days without a new coronavirus case. We've got no active cases in the state. On Monday, we had a new coronavirus death. Uh, uh, a lady who, you know, seventies. I think uh, I'm not sure, actually sure if it was a lady. I don't, I don't think a gender was specified. Uh, died uh, uh, died from the coronavirus, even though recovered uh, back in uh, September, or as they said, cleared as an active uh, case, and said it was from complications arising from their uh, coronavirus infection. It was a COVID-related death. Obviously, our sympathy with that uh, person who who who, who died, uh, but they. Uh, yeah, God bless me. Yeah, they, they're a person who most likely died with COVID, not of COVID. And so that's why they said COVID related. Yeah. Now, Tim, um, I'm sorry, man, but as you know, I uh, didn't have much time. So uh, now we hit the 30 minute mark. Um, I've got to yeah, go, well, man. Well, I've thanks. Got, I've got to go get me my, 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 my tattoo. I've got a, a tattoo planned on this arm. So, well, thanks for stopping on. by. Uh, it was it, it's, it was good to reflect on our, uh, well, even though it was temporary, uh, great escape. But we are. It is good that well, uh, we're going to have a somewhat of a old normal uh, summer, and and certainly well the the heat uh, up there yep. uh, it, uh, on the the border community is around about forty degrees, which is no, that's not due to climate change. It's always bloody hot. 
uh, up there. Mm. It used to get so hot in Adelaide, the fucking bins would melt. Mm. You know, it, it's, it was insane. There'd be like, um, they, they used to have these ashtray bins like on light posts and stuff and just the traffic lights and things like that. And the council would never clean them. So, like, they'd have a good year's worth of winter people shoving fucking cigarette butts in there. And then by summer, summer's end, they've all, like, gotten dry and manky in there. Someone puts one fresh butt in there. It, <laughs> it explodes. Yeah. And friggin', it goes on fire. And the stench, you can smell them from the streets of Adelaide. Burnt cigarette smell everywhere. But anyway, Tim, proud of your boy. I'll all catch right? you later. This is Will's Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. And I hope you enjoyed uh, my discussion there with uh, Hillbilly there. Uh, I've got to be able to... This is my first time doing a... playing a interview that I recorded uh, in this new software on uh, this new software... Uh, itself. So I think I've managed uh, logistically uh, quite well. Uh, now, if you want to see uh, more of uh, Hillbilly's uh, videos on the, the Proud of Your Hunter uh, channel, uh, I'll just put it uh, here. This is the, so you just type in pretty much uh, Proud of Your Hunter channel into YouTube. And as you can see, he's already got an extensive back catalog of videos. It's a growing uh, channel, uh, 127 subscribers. So a lot of them, as you'd expect, are, are hunting videos, but uh, there is also a, a construction and maintenance videos and also uh, he, uh, his report uh, from the Melbourne uh, Freedom Day uh, protest on, on Melbourne Cup Day uh, there. Uh, you'll remember that... Uh, uh, <clears throat> November the 3rd, that was uh, outside uh, Victoria's uh, Parliament House on Spring Street. Uh, at that time, we were still living under both a state of emergency and state of disaster. Uh, Victoria is, is still just under a state of emergency, but the state of disaster has been removed. Uh, this is when uh, all of the Victoria Police, what's known as kettled, surrounded all the protesters and uh, then picked them off one by one uh, to take them away for processing and issued them all with uh, 1,652 uh, infringement notices. And uh, because it was a, a warm day that day, uh, a lot of them were, were thirsty there, trapped for, for hours in that, and so police gave them water with uh, paper cups uh, from a bucket from a local pub, which doesn't seem very uh, COVID safe, and well, but, uh, and it was quite uh, degrading that a lot of the, the protesters were treated that way. Thanks for tuning in to Thanks for tuning in to Wilms. Visit timwilms.com.org.au and keep visiting the unshackled.net for you all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.